Hi there, Intune friends. In today's short video, we're going to look at reporting, especially about Windows updates and especially about features update. So you know you have the quality updates, which are the one who comes every month, and you have the feature update, which is like from uh, 22H2 to 23H2, or bigger updates with new features. So if you want to have some reporting, how is it going and stuff, so where do we find that? So we are in the console, we are in IntuneMicrosoft.com. So if we go down here, we actually have one called Reports. Let's look under there. And it's loading. So we have a lot of stuff, but we have one here called Windows Updates. So let's click on that one. And here this one is actually empty from the beginning. You have to click on refresh and then it takes all. So these two here can be mapped to, let me go there, devices. And we scroll down a bit down here under devices. So here we have, uh, should be the feature updates because those were the one we're looking at. So those are mapped here. One is not even uh, uh, assigned anymore because I want only 23H2 Windows 11. So those names come. So if we go back from reports, there it's the mapping. And then we go again, Windows Update. And there we have these two. And uh, you also have a bit for uh, quality updates, which I just take the latest all the time. I don't control them. And the Windows driver updates. I am mostly Hyper-V host. I have one uh, Dell that I have uh, tested that on. So anyhow, we want to go on the reports to get the nice report. So here we have five different reports. Let me zoom in a bit on this one. Oh, I was on 90% for some reason. So we have the Windows Feature Update Report. That's the one we're going to look at in this video. Then we have a few others. This one could be Update Readiness. That could be interesting maybe for when Windows 12 will be released to see how many of our devices actually can be upgraded to Windows 12. Now, normally when you're in Windows 11, normally those feature updates you your device are ready for. Then we have what we spoke before, Driver, to get some status about that. And the same with the compatibility risk report. I thought those were pretty equal, but this is maybe more about apps and drivers, and this is actually the hardware. And then we have again Windows quality update, and I don't, uh, I just run uh, the latest all the time. So I'm interested in how well is the Windows um, 11 23 H2 update uh, going, for example. Let's click on the Windows Feature Update Report, and it's going to remember the last one I ran, so I'm going to unselect the filter. So if you've never been here, it's going to probably look more like this. So first, we're going to select the feature update we want to know about, and I want to know about 23H2. Uh, it's the one active. I want to know how is it going. And then you can select the different here, uh, progress and everything. I want to know everything, but if you are just interested in error, you could remove the success, for example. Then ownership, if it's business, uh, personal or company or unknown, I want to know everything. So I'm going to generate here. That's going to take not too long time. And then it's going to show all who in progress success. But we're going to reach a little issue here. There is one prerequisite before you can get any real data. So here it says that it's an offering status and in progress, which is not true. These have a few of these at least have already got uh, 23H2. Um, so why I could wait for years? This won't change anything. There are uh, prerequisites. So let's. I'm going to put this link in the in the description of this video. So there are a few things that we need to have for this to work. Of course, some it has to be Microsoft Entra joined. So before it was called the Azure AD, now it's called Microsoft Entra, put that on your memory, or hybrid. This one was called Azure AD hybrid before. Then it has to be Windows 10, 19, or three or later. Obviously you, you have that. So the device is probably good, but in order to collect the data, we must first enable configuration data collection. Maybe you have it or maybe you don't have it. So we go in here 
And to do that, we need to have a profile called Windows Health Monitoring. It's a configuration profile. And in there, we must have, uh, see the screenshot, Windows Updates checked. And I think in my environment, for some reason, I have only endpoint analytics, which I'm not using. So, but I need to check this one and probably you too, if that's not already set by another admin. So we go back. So before we can get any data here, so let's go devices. Let's look at configuration profiles. And we have a few here. If you followed along my videos, you should have a lot of them uh, yourself. So. You could create one, but I have one here, Intune Data Collection Policy. I assume that one has uh, come by default, but if not, create it. So I'm going to click on this one and just modify it. Maybe it's not, be sure it's target to everyone also. I think, however, it is target to everyone. So first, assignment, that's a target. It's already targeted to all device. I'm going to add it to all the users also, can't hurt, right? Let's add it to all users and no filter. Perfect. Save that one. But that's not enough because as mentioned, we also need to uh, change the setting um, to uh, add the uh, Windows update. So here are all the config. I scroll down here. Down here, you see configuration settings. Let's click edit here. We can already see what it has if we click down here. So scope endpoint analytic. If we go back here, that means I have endpoint analytic checked, but not Windows Update. So I'm going to go back here, click on Edit, and Health Monitoring enabled. Uh, it can be disabled or not configured. Enabled is good. We definitely want that. But here we want Windows uh, Updates. I could uncheck this one, but let's keep both. So now the clients are going to send back this data. So on the server side, it's never been an issue. Perfect. So now if we look here, health monitoring scope, endpoint analytics, and Windows updates, that's what we want. So now we have all the prerequisites. Uh, it can take up to 24 hours before uh, this is, has been applied. So it, it could take some time. So I'm gonna pause the video and when I'm back, uh, hopefully we have some more data here on the report. I'm going to end on this, uh, not end, I'm going to pause on this screen just to show uh, that we probably don't have any data yet here. Because we have all the server data, we the server knows that it's in progress, but it has no data from uh, the client. So if I do generate here, I don't think anything have changed because it can take quite a long time. Yeah, we're in the same state. So I'm going to post the video here. And when I'm back, I'm just going to show uh, the results. And we're going to go through a bit how we can read this data also. OK, we are back. For me, it's past more than 24 hours because uh, it needs that time. It was written in the documentation. I thought by restarting some services, I could do something. But no, I had to wait the day after. So. Right now, we still see device in progress. If I generate this again, I should see uh, new numbers. Or actually, two more should be running because uh, two have actually upgraded to 23H2. So hopefully, that should show here now. OK, so now we see two device success. Why don't we see this one? Well, this one can't even run Windows 11, and it hasn't been online. But uh, here you see uh, last event time, so this have. So we see uh, two have a success, so we can get the data. We can even export this. So if we say yes, we're going to get it as a CSV file. Perfect open in Excel. And I know a lot of you who watch my videos, you always uh, request um, real world um, example and uh, this is my test environment but i have some data from uh, a real company but i have blurred out uh, all sensitive data and i just took a few uh, example so here i got a csv file i could open that so i'm going to take um, a real file from uh, real world and just show what it could look like i have um, renamed them to gbn 
and uh, created some uh, fake users, a lot from uh, <laughs> uh, Frozen, uh, the Disney one, and uh, some other people. Anyhow, that's not what's interesting. What's interesting is the status. So it can be in different status. So if you're a company with uh, thousands of uh, devices, you will want to export and look through this and then filter. So you can go by the number here. So the lower number on this one, which is current uh, device update substatus, that's the most interesting one. So the higher number, the better. So for example, my machines have success. Well, they, they have an update installed, so 23. If we start from the lowest one, 30, it just means that it's um, scheduled. So it's under, so it's gonna show us in progress, but nothing have actually happened. It's just scheduled. The machine haven't even accepted it. Then if we go the fourth one, then it's still in progress, but here it says the offer is ready. So if the machine gets it, uh, it can get it, so to speak. Then if we check the next number closest, that's got to be 16. So then it start to download. So after the offer is ready, the client start to download. You're still in, in progress. Then it download. And what do you think 17 is? Well, maybe download complete. Yeah, then it have download. That just means the binaries are there. It hasn't started to install anything. Then after that, we have 18. We're still in progress. That means the install have started. So this machine here, uh, the install have started, but it's not finished, or at least they have not reported that to Intune. So after 18, we have, uh, I would have thought there would be one installed finished, but okay. So when it's finished to installed, it's want the reboot required because it's finished. We are still in progress. And after the reboot have happened, the update is success. Well, I said you want as high number as possible, right? Well, you definitely don't want 30. So 30 means that it's an error and it needs attention. And you actually have a last alert message. I don't find that extremely helpful, but a bit maybe. So here we can see why this one needs error. Insufficient update connectivity. Could it be that the network was closed during that? They shut down or have bad network connectivity? Maybe, so I don't know, this one maybe have to rerun it again. This one, I have seen a pretty common device uh, registration, no trust type. So let's look, what does this mean, mean, the device registration, no trust type? So I'll open a new tab. I paste in a link that I'm gonna put in the description of this video. So if we search on uh, trust here, here is our device re registration no trust type. So the device isn't able to register or authenticate probably with Windows Update because it cannot uh, establish trust. So verify that the device is uh, joined, maybe it's hybrid joined and that um, the account and everything is working. So this means you probably have to uh, remote into this machine and do some more investigations. So. Look out for those errors. The others could just be waiting time. If they are too long time in schedule, haven't picked it up, maybe the machine haven't been online and that's why it doesn't get it. Okay, so to summarize, very simple. Uh, the report is under the report. Then you go Windows Update. You click here on the reports, Windows Feature Update Report, and then you generate. If you always have them in progress and never and something doesn't happen, uh, it doesn't advance, then you have to enable it. And that was under devices, the configuration profile. And I already had one. I'm unsure if you have to create it, but the policy type have to be Windows Health Monitoring. You go there, you just verify that under Health Monitoring, the scope include Windows Update. After you have enabled this, again, you have to wait very long time. So give it 24 hours, then go and refresh your report and you should have a lot of nice data. Thank you very much for following along. See you in the next video. Have a great day.